I live in a tropical paradise, just a few miles away from a world-class surf wave. There is lots of old tales by the native elders of witches running this town before it was taken away by the settlers hundreds of years ago. Everything from witches using packs of jaguars to fend off the settlers, as well as serpents and every other powerful animal that could fight. They were said to use the venom of the venomous snakes to set up traps for the settlers coming into their territory. They had special powers so none of the settlers were able to conquer their small island territory. There was one specific tale that my grandpa would tell me all the time of the witches that were casted away by the settlers into a rock to live forever until the world ends. It was said the witches rock tale began when the settlers were moving past the large river, separating the mainland and the island territory of the witches. You could only access the area by crossing through the river, but the witches would always use their powers and the large saltwater crocodiles to take down dozens of soldiers attempting to cross. They were taking down entire fleets of boats, using the power of the river and their connection with the local predators in a superhuman battle against the settlers. It took them months to finally get a group of soldiers into the island territory where they were met with extremely large witch-like serpents that began a vast and destructful fight against all the settlers who had crossed. The story says the serpents were over 100 feet long and as wide as elephants. They would sit along the bank every day at low tide fending back hordes of soldiers attempting to get by. The food supply was going low, and the only way for the soldiers to eat was to get past the large witch to be able to hunt the local meat provided in the island territory. The settlers had their own supernatural powers that were being brought in from countries away to counter the serpents that would not allow anyone into their lands. It would take at least one month before the settler's secret plan would arrive to continue their defense against the witch serpents. In the meantime, the settlers were forced to sail out to the ocean in search of fish they would be able to catch out at sea. But this entire area was a trap for the settlers, as the witches reigned power over the entire area and would use the sea life to attack the settlers every time they would venture out to the ocean. On occasion they would be able to hunt down small whales enough to feed the starving settlers waiting on the tropical island shores to continue their barrage against the witches. Everything the settlers would think of would have counterattacks, as they would all end up getting sick after eating the meat of the whale they would gather at sea. They blamed it on the witches, that they had casted powerful spells to repel the soldiers in every possible way. They all began to believe this was an endless battle with hundreds of soldiers lost and dozens killing themselves with no hope. The weeks went by as the soldiers lived off coconut water and coconut meat and any small critters they could gather along the ocean shores such as crabs and lizards. They could see the abundance of wildlife across the river, but it was a death trap to try and cross without meeting the witches with powers of their own. It had been two weeks as the soldiers awaited on shore for their backup plan to arrive, when they could see dozens of enormous serpents slowly exiting the forest looking in their direction. They were all lined up along the banks, staring in the soldiers' direction as they pointed their weapons towards them. It was all a bluff, as they had already noticed their bullets and weapons had no effect on the serpents every time they attempted to attack. The serpents, one by one, began entering the river as it flowed extremely powerful since they were enduring a tropical thunderstorm. One by one, the men began fleeing down the ocean coast as the serpents began taking them down one by one, throwing them into the ocean to drown by the large powerful waves. The soldiers were already dehydrated and hungry, so they had no energy to swim off the ocean waves as their lifeless bodies slowly began washing up on shore over the next several days. Now about 90% of their soldiers had been finished off, and only the last 10% that managed to hide were still alive. They all gathered up as they knew they were stronger in groups instead of alone to get picked off by the witches. 
their backup plan was set to arrive any moment as they could see a large glowing ship coming in from the distance. It had a massive glow that they had never seen before and was to be used against the witches. They didn't come to save the soldiers, they came to defeat the witches so they could settle on their islands that had an abundance of resources and lost treasures by other nations who attempted to take over the witches' lands. The large glowing ship sailed up onto the sandbanks of the island as a supernatural force began fighting the witches. The battles had already been days in with casualties on both sides, but the soldiers had noticed they were making progress. They had began to enter the islands as the witches were being rounded up one by one, stored in large cave-like caverns off the coast of the island. What lasted months and then years of fighting, the entire island was rid of the witches that had been protecting it since the beginning of time. They were all shackled and placed into the caves, being sealed off by the mountains of the island itself. There was no exit for the last witches that survived, and the only way they could get out of the cave is when an enormous earthquake breaks open the island rocks or the volcano erupts. My grandpa would tell me this story every year around Halloween and tells me it's the true history of our island, that it's not told by the government. They have kept it a secret from the public because the witches are set to escape again sometime in the future. They have no defense for it, but believe the moment the volcano erupts, all the witches will be released to reclaim their islands in the same vicious way it was taken away. The volcano has become active this year as you can hear loud roars and a small mist of smoke coming out the top of the volcano. The local government says it's not going to erupt, but nobody believes them since mother nature is unpredictable. The fishermen say during the low tide while fishing at night, you can hear cries coming from the rocks within the mountains and what sounds like the noises of chains rattling around. I'm beginning to believe our island is close to going back to the old days where witches were in control. The ash from the volcano lands on our property and has been getting worse and worse every month. The small earthquakes and roars the volcano produces have become a weekly occurrence now, which has led many of the people living here to move away to other countries. My entire family has passed away and I've been living here alone for the past several years. I've put up my house for sale and plan on starting a new life overseas as soon as I sell my property. I can only wish for the best for all those who decide to continue living on the island.